the most beautiful things are simple. Welcome to The Good Life. This is Ambassador Larry Huggins in Barcelona, Spain, and I hope you're having a wonderful day, morning, evening, whatever time zone, time zone you're in. And Jesus wants you to have life and to have it more abundantly. And we, hope, we want to help you have that abundant life. We're in a very special series called The Gospel of Paul, and this is episode 14. It's actually part of episode 13, but I didn't get finished with episode 13 because I had too much material to share in our 15 minutes. But uh, you, can, you can share a lot of information in 15 minutes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for the Word of God, which illuminates the paths that we're walking in. We're not walking in darkness, but we're walking in the revelation of your Word so that we can know what to do and how to live the good life. Bless me to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, we're going we're gonna to review just a little bit, not much. Praise the Lord. Um, gosh, something just happened here. Give me a second. There we go. I don't know what happened. Computers do funny things sometimes. <laughs> when, uh, when Paul was saved on the road to Damascus. He was probably saved in, in Damascus. He was struck down on the road to Damascus, but he went to Damascus and Ananias prayed for him to receive the Holy Spirit and to be healed. But Ananias' reaction to Jesus telling him to pray for Saul of Tarsus was, man, are you sure? I've heard uh, that this man has done much evil. Many people have said he's done much evil. And the Lord said, no, uh, he's going to bear my name from before Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So Paul knew from the get-go that this message that he was entrusted with was going to cause persecutions. He knew that from the beginning. And uh, in fact, it, it, uh, it stirred up the devil. His message was so powerful. It's, it stirred up the Jews, it stirred up the heathen, and it stirred up the devil. And I think it was the devil behind uh, stirring up the Jews and the Gentiles. But Paul said to the Corinthians in chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations that I received from heaven, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan sent to buffet, buffet, buffet me, unless I'm exalted above measure. Paul said his thorn in the flesh was a demon messenger sent to attack him over and over and over. I know that some theologians and Bible teachers have a other idea of what the a thorn's flesh was. Some people said he had glaucoma. I don't know where they get these things. Right here in black and white, it says he was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Uh, the devil came after Paul every way he could to try to stop the message of grace that God had given him. And even today, the message of grace comes under attack by, uh, of all people, people in the church. Seems like sinners are okay with the message of grace, but some of the self-righteous group in the church preach against it. And I don't understand that. I don't know why they would have one foot in the law and one foot in grace, one foot in the Old Testament, one foot in the New Testament. Uh, we need to get out of the Old Testament. Paul said, if you're going to obey one part of the law, you have to obey it all. And there's no way to, to mix them together. You can't mix the Old Testament and the New Testament. We have a better covenant based upon better promises. So uh, thank God that Jesus came and fulfilled the Old Covenant, made it redundant. Then he uh, went into heaven, and we're going to get into this in the days of head, and uh, offered up his own blood for our eternal sacrifice. No more animal sacrifice. Jesus did it once and forever, uh, and that's a good thing. And uh, then he chose Paul supernaturally to be the premier apostle of the message of grace, which he delivered unto uh, Jews and Gentiles and uh, all over the place. We're going to get into that too during this. Paul told Timothy, you've carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, 
and what persecutions I endured. Paul went through persecutions from day one. In fact, he started preaching in Damascus right after he got saved, and, and the Jews, maybe the ones he had with him when he was going to, to Damascus to arrest Christians and put them in chains, but the Jews in Damascus uh, had a, hatched a plot to kill him, and so uh, the Christians there found out about it, and they they helped Paul escape by lowering him in a basket, obviously tied to a rope over the wall that surrounded Damascus. So the persecution started for Paul right away. And it's because of the message that he got. Now that's what I'm talking about today is how dire the ministry of Paul was, how dangerous it was, how much he sacrificed, how much he endured to release this message of grace to the world. And if you will, to you and to me, he went through all that suffering so that we in our generation could have what he released in his generation. Praise God, it's for all generations. Praise the Lord. Um, this gets so good. Uh, Paul said, uh, why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? He said, I fought the wild beast of Ephesus. Can you imagine that? He was in the arena fighting wild beasts, maybe bulls, maybe lions or tigers. We don't know. But uh, there was uh, something they, they did at Ephesus is they would, they would put someone in an arena, it was kind of like uh, the gladiators, and put wild beasts in there and, and they, they had fun watching the wild beast rip somebody to shreds. And Paul said, I have fought the wild beast at Ephesus, so apparently he survived. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 4, 5, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, that means beatings, in imprisonments, in tumults, uh, you know, uh, what would you call that? It's when riots happen. In labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, both voluntary and involuntary. I think more of Paul's fasting was involuntary. Uh, he, he was starved. Uh, he, he was denied, uh, you know, the basic... Uh, uh, necessities of life oftentimes put in prison and so forth. But uh, I want to get into one last verse of Scripture, and you're familiar with this, but I want to go through it because we're talking about the price that Paul paid to be able to deliver the message of grace to us. Now, no one else in the Bible went through as much as Paul went through. I mean, some people were killed. Yeah, Paul was too at the end of his life. He, he Gave his, he gave himself to be offered up. But some people were, were martyred early on. They never really, uh, what they did was not recorded in the Bible outside of Stephen, the first martyr. And we know Peter was killed and we know that James was killed and so forth. But Paul got to run the course and finish the race. And he got to do a lot of things before he was killed. Killing, uh, being killed would have been pretty easy compared what, to what he went through. He went through things that are so terrible. I have a friend in Mexico who's a, a, probably a billionaire, and, and um, kidnapping is a cottage industry in Mexico, and wealthy people are at risk all the time. And he found out that his security man was in cahoots with kidnappers. Now, here's what happens when they kidnap you. Is they, they, they don't just hold you, they torture you oftentimes. And so my friend was driving his car that was in northern Mexico, and he knows that this security guy sitting next to him is one of the conspirators. And so he leaves the road. He drives out across the desert. He comes to a cliff, and the car is right there on the edge of the cliff. And my friend said to him, said, all right, here's what's going to happen. I'm not going to be kidnapped. I would much rather die at the bottom of this, this cliff than to be kidnapped and tortured. So you make up your mind. Are you going to call off the, uh, the uh, kidnapping or do you want to die with me because you're going down with me? <laughs> well, obviously, the security guard had a revelation and he did not kill my friend. But the reason I brought up that story is because uh, uh, sometimes death is a reprieve. It's better than torture. But Paul went through the torture. Listen to this list. He said, I was in labors more abundant. 
I, the, the ministry is hard work. People think it's easy. They see a preacher get up and preach and, uh, and for 40 minutes. And I remember one time I was at a church and they, they gave me a pretty good offering. And this fellow said to me, uh, uh, why do you think talking for 40 minutes is, is worth uh, that much money? It's not worth that much money. I said, it's not for 40 minutes. It's for 40 years of experience and travel and persecutions and hardships and so forth. But people don't see what preachers go, go through, especially missionaries who travel in all over the world in, in uh, war-torn countries. I've, I've been in countries with revolution, gunshots uh, awakened to the sound of AK-47s. That's an unmistakable sound, had death threats. Uh, I've been tossed in the sea in an open boat. Uh, I've, uh, you know, went through sickness, a lot of stuff. I'm not going to get into all that because uh, I'm not going to compare myself to what Paul went through. See how we're doing for time. Uh, not much. Not much left. Uh, I was in stripes above measure. In other words, I couldn't number how many, I couldn't count how many times I was beaten above measure. In prisons more frequently than anybody else. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Now, if you go online or something and you, and you Google how many, how many stripes did Paul receive, it would probably say 195 because uh, there were five beatings and uh, it was 40 lashes save one. So it's 39, five times 39 is 195. But what they don't factor in is that those, those whips had nine strands, and each one of the strands had uh, bones and metal uh, platted into it. And so each strike created nine wounds or more. And so Paul could have had 1,755 scars across his back from, just from the Jews just from the Jews. They laid 17,000, uh, I mean, 1,755 wounds in his back. The Jews did, his own countrymen. And uh, in, to the Galatians, he said, brethren, if I preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Uh, the Jews would have laid off of Paul if he'd given up on the message of grace and gone back to preaching legalism. They, 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 they would have given up on him. And these weren't just religious Orthodox Jews. Some of these were were so-called born-again Messianic Jews who had converted, but they had not let go of their legalistic doctrines, and they tried to, tried to mix those doctrines of circumcision and the Shabbat in with the message of grace, and, I mean, into the message of salvation, and it wasn't working. And Paul came against those people often. Uh, at least his message was contrary to what they preached, and sometimes he stood up against them personally and called them by name, but uh, he said he was in perils in his own country when he listed them in Damascus, in Jerusalem, in Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra, in Thessaloniki, in Berea, in Corinth. Praise God. Uh, everywhere he went, uh, it seemed like there was a cabal of, of uh, Jews who were out to get him. So anyway, he was in uh, perils of robbers, bandits, perils of his own countrymen, Perils of the Gentiles, perils in the city, perils in the wilderness, perils in the sea, perils among false brethren, in weariness, in toil, in sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst and fastings and cold and nakedness. And he didn't even mention uh, getting a snake bit. And um, also, you know, he, he spent 24 hours in the open water. He, you know, overboard. He had five ships sink out from underneath of him. Uh, there's no way to calculate everything he went through because it's not all recorded. It's, we have kind of like the cliff notes of what he went through. Why did he go through that? Why did he endure what he endured? Because of the gospel of grace that he was given him. He put such an extreme value on that. He valued it more than his own safety, more than his than his own comfort and more than it's his own life. And I think we should put a high value on the message of grace. Uh, you don't have to be martyred. You don't have to go through the things that Paul went through, but I, I do strongly recommend that you at least become familiar 
with the message of grace and what it really says and don't knock it and don't listen to people who are knocking it. They, they, they really don't understand. You know, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. To, to come against the gospel of grace is to come against the judgment of Jesus. It was his judgment to uh, end the Old Testament. It was his judgment or decision to begin a new covenant. It was his decision to release the gospel of grace. It was his decision to choose Paul to carry that gospel of grace. So to come against this gospel that Jesus himself released is to come against the work of God in the earth. Don't do that. I strongly recommend it. You need to read it. You need to be familiar with it. You need to stick with me through this series so that you can get a greater appreciation of how precious this gospel of Paul is. Praise God. And no one else preached what he preached exactly as he preached it in the depth that he preached it. And uh, today, we, we uh, our lives are so much better and so much easier because of this gospel. Praise God. He told the Hebrew Christians, he said, you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin, but he did. He, he, he resisted unto blood. He was bloodied many, many times. The, the Romans beat him with rods, I think, five times, which is really supposed to uh, kill him, uh, iron rods. And one thing they do is break all the bones in the feet, bam, and that happened to him on more than one occasion. And, uh, and then the stonings, that, that was a death sentence. So when he says in deaths often, all of these things he went through, the wild beast and shipwreck, he should have died. He was supernaturally delivered. He said, I went through all this stuff and the Lord delivered me out of it all. Praise God. Not only did he preach this message, he lived this message and he demonstrated the power of God's grace, his willingness to use his power in our lives, even though we don't, we haven't done anything to deserve it. Praise God. And then I want to, I want to close today with this. I'm about two minutes over now. He told the Galatians, he said, from now on, don't let anybody trouble me for I bear in my body, the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he mean? Don't trouble me. Well, people were criticizing him. They were criticizing his message. They were armchair quarterbacks who were sitting around saying, he shouldn't do this. He shouldn't do that. He shouldn't preach this. He shouldn't preach that. And none of them had resisted sin to the shedding of blood as Paul had. None of them had been through what he went through, all the beatings and everything. They really did not have a right to criticize. You know, unless you walk a mile in someone's shoes, you can't criticize them. Well, uh, the, uh, the 20,000 or so miles that Paul traveled, uh, if you had been down that that road with him, you would have a little bit of an understanding if you'd if you had suffered the way he did. And so when he said, "Don't let anybody trouble me," I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe he was saying, "You people, you people have no right to criticize me. Have you taken a look at all the marks, all the scars that I have? You see the 1,700 scars the Jews gave me. You see the scars the Romans gave me. You see the scars the Ephesians gave me. You see the scars from being stoned. You see the scars. I, these are the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think it must have been horrendous. I've got a few scars. I've, I've got more scars than the average person. Uh, I was a rough and tumble kid when I was young, and uh, and I, um, I, I got a lot of scars. Believe you me, uh, nothing uh, life threatening, but uh, I got a lot of reminders of some of the painful things that I've experienced. But I didn't I didn't experience that for the gospel's sake. So I experienced it because I was a rowdy kid growing up in rural Texas, Southwest Texas. And uh, we kind of we kind of bragged about our scars, and a lot of guys do. They'll get together and brag at their scars. I actually have a tattoo covering up one scar right here, uh, a skill saw right across here. Uh, here's one, chainsaw. Don't do that. I got one on my side about this long uh, water skiing accident, and then I've got all these other scars. And, uh, you can't even see them. There's scars on top of scars on top of scars on top of scars, just all over. 
And men will brag about it. Men will get together and say, oh, yeah, yeah, what's this right here? Skill saw, bit me. Uh, so Paul, Paul bragged on his scars. He said, don't let anybody trouble me. He said, you guys just shut up. You're a bunch of, you're a bunch of sissies. Uh, you've never done anything hard. Not like I have until you can match me stripe for stripe, stoning for stoning, beating for beating. You don't have a right to criticize me. So don't trouble me anymore. I, I imagine, and if I was going to write a, a, a film about Paul's life, I would have a scene where he's talking to these um, uh, Judaizers who are preaching circumcision. And I could imagine him just ripping his shirt off and turning around and bearing the scars on his back and let that testify of what he had been through for the gospel. Praise God. Aren't you glad you don't have to go through it? Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for blessing everyone. Let's put the message of grace to work in our lives so that we don't have to go through this awful stuff. Praise the Lord. Jesus went through all he went through. Paul went through everything he went through so that we can uh, have a, a good life, a successful life. Uh, it, whoever lives godly in Christ Jesus will suffer, suffer persecutions, and that happens occasionally. And there is a persecuted church around the world. There's an underground church. There are people martyred every day. Many people martyred every day for the cause of Christ. But I pray that you protect everyone who's listening to me. And as we go through uh, this message, the Gospel of Paul, I want it to be a faith-building experience, build hope and faith in people. What a powerful message it is. Help us to have a hunger for it and help us to comprehend it in Jesus' name. Well, I went over a few minutes. That's all right. Uh, it's all good. And I want to invite you to be with us at Z Church every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock in Pacific time. Real easy to get there. And it's real easy to give a donation if you want to do that. Go to the website, zchurch.life. And on Saturdays, you click on the, on the arrow, the little pointer thing right in the middle of the homepage and you're, you're in church just like that. Or you can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch at the same time, 10 o'clock Pacific. And if you want to give something, Go to the go to the homepage, zchurch.life, and pull down the giving tab from the menu. And there's uh, three different ways to give there. Praise God! Uh, one, two, three, four different ways to give. I think so we want to make it easy for you to give. All right, I have one last thing to say to you, and that is to keep it simple, sweetheart. Cause sometimes the most beautiful things can be. So simple.